good morning students today we are going to study the first lesson two gentlemen of verona written by archibald joseph cronin who was a scottish novelist dramatist and doctor also many of his stories have emerged from the medical career his novel a country doctor was adapted for a long running british broadcasting radio and tv series in this lesson two gentlemen of verona the author describes the mature behavior of the two boys named nicola and jacopo these two boys are always busy and doing all sorts of jobs like polishing shoes selling fruits distributing newspapers and working as tourist guides also they are doing all these types of work in order to help their sister named lucia who is suffering from tuberculosis for her recovery only they are doing uh, work without rest and uh, in this way the author portrays the love devotion and humanity among the siblings let's start the lesson now as we drove through the foothills of the alps two small boys stopped us on the outskirts of verona they were selling wild strawberries don't buy one lugi or casius driver you will get much better fruit in verona besides these boys the lesson is in the narrative form the narrator and uh, his driver both were traveling through the foothills of the alps and at the time two boys were standing and they were just they stopped their vehicle um, they were selling wild strawberries at the time Uh, driver lugi he said don't buy uh, strawberries from these boys because we can get the better fruit in verona so in this way they continue their journey he shrugged his soldiers to convey his disapproval of their shabby appearance now uh, the driver uh, just symbolically raised his soldiers uh, to convey his disapproval because of their shabby appearance shabby means very dirty appearance one by had a worn jersey and cut off khaki pants the other a shortened army tunic girded in loose folds about his skinny frame yet gazing at the two little figures with their brown skins tangled hair and dark earnest eyes we felt ourselves strangely attracted my companion spoke to the boys discovered that they were brothers nicola the elder was uh, 13 jacob who barely came up to the door handle of the car was nearly 12 we bought their biggest basket and then set off towards town one one boy had a own jersey he was wearing uh, uh, the dresses in a in that is a uh, old type of dresses uh, wearing uh, khaki pants and jersey and uh, another another one uh, he was wearing the tunic tunic means uh, sleeveless uh, garment uh, with loose folds also uh, even though they were uh, wearing the shabby dresses or uh, their appearance seems to be very dirty uh, their behavior and uh, their way of uh, speaking everything attracted uh, the or the narrator and now the driver again he was talking to those boys inquiring about them now uh, they come to know uh, the names of the two boys as nicola he was the elder boy uh, 13 years old and jacob 12 years old boy uh, we bought their biggest basket and then set off towards them at first uh, both uh, that is the driver Uh, hesitated to buy at last um, they bought a biggest basket of uh, this strawberries as we made the rounds my interest was again provoked by their remarkable demeanor they were childish enough and in many ways quite artless jacob was lively as a squirrel nicole's uh, smile was steady and engaging yet in both these boys faces there was a seriousness which was far beyond their years in the week 
which followed we saw them frequently for they proved extremely useful to us if we wanted a pack of american cigarettes or seats for the opera or the name of a good restaurant nicola and jaco could be relied upon to satisfy our needs as we made the rounds so they were uh, traveling so many places in the city uh, and again they were uh, attracted by the demeanor that is appearance and behavior of these two boys even though their face and their behavior everything seems uh, to be uh, childish uh, uh, they were serious uh, sometimes that is not exposing uh, seriousness outwardly but uh, their uh, look seems to be serious often uh, they are helping uh, the narrator and the driver uh, getting uh, american cigarettes or uh, sometimes uh, uh, arranging uh, seats uh, in the musical play uh, in this way they are often uh, helping the narrator and the driver that's why they are noticing them minutely next morning coming out of our hotel we saw our friends bent over shoe shine boxes beside the fountain in public square doing brisk business the next morning the author uh, that is sorry the narrator and the driver both were noticing the same boys again both were uh, very busy with their work that is uh, they were polishing their shoes beside beside means near the fountain and the public square in the public uh, place we watched for a few moments then a straight slack and we went over they greeted us with friendly faces and now both uh, the narrator and the driver watched uh, these boys for few moments uh, and after uh, some minutes uh, the trade the business slack and reduced and uh, these uh, people were greeted by the two boys i thought you picked fruit for your living i said we do many things sir nicola answered seriously he glanced at us hopefully often we show visitors through the town the Ju- uh, juliet's tomb and other places of interest now the narrator uh, asked uh, yesterday you picked fruit uh, uh, but now you are uh, polishing the shoes like that nicola replied immediately sir we are not doing a single job we are doing all sorts of jobs sometimes uh, we will uh, play the role of the tourist guide and we will guide the visitors uh, to uh, reach uh, juliet's tomb uh, and other places uh, out of interest all right i smiled you take us along now the narrator said okay we are also willing to uh, visit juliet's tomb uh, juliet's tomb shall we go like that the narrator asked the boys what struck one most was their willingness to work during these summer days under the hot sun they shined shoes sold fruit hawked newspapers conducted tourist round the town and ran errands so easily the people may be attracted by their activities because these uh, two children they are not uh, worrying about the hot sun simply they are uh, selling uh, they were selling fruits uh, sometimes uh, they were uh, distributing the newspapers uh, sometimes uh, uh, they were playing the role of the tourist guide and uh, also they were doing odd jobs one night we came upon them in the windy and deserted square resting on the stone pavement beneath the lights nicola sat upright tired a bundle of unsold newspapers lay at his feet jaco his uh, head resting upon his brother's shoulder was asleep it was nearly midnight so one night uh, the narrator and the driver both were noticing these two boys and nicola seemed to be very tired and jacob was also uh, resting upon his brother's shoulder they were uh, uh, somewhat uh, in a different uh, their look 
seems to be dull also because uh, they had a bundle of unsold newspapers. Why are you out so late, Nicola? Waiting for the last bus from Pada. We shall sell our newspapers when it comes in. Must you work so hard? You both look rather tired. We are not complaining, sir. Now uh, the narrator was inquiring, uh, why are you be, uh, here uh, during night time? Simply Nicola replied, uh, because uh, we have... Uh, uh, bundle of uh, newspaper unsold newspapers at the time the narrator was asking why we are working so hard at this uh, tender age but the boys replied we are not complaining about it sir because we are ready to do the work at any time but next morning when i went over to the fountain to have my shoes signed i said nicola the way you and jacob work you must earn quite a bit you spend nothing on clothes. You eat little enough. When I see you have a meal, it is usually black bread and figs. Tell me, what do you do with your money? The next morning, the narrator again went to the fountain. At the time, um, he just uh, simply asked Nicola, You both are doing uh, all sorts of job and uh, you can earn uh, uh, that is the sufficient money also but you are not spending uh, much for your clothes and also you are not eating uh, properly simply you are eating black bread and fix only what's the reason and what are you going to do with this money in this way the narrator encouraged the boys he colored deeply under his sunburn and then grew pale he looked to the ground but nicola simply uh, just uh, he looked to the ground only he didn't reply at the time you must be saving up to emigrate to america i suggested he looked at me sideways spoke with an effort but the narrator said i think you are saving money in order to emigrate that is move in order to uh, go to america only we should greatly like to go to the states but here at present we have other plans but the boys replied yes we have the idea to go to america but not now we have some other plans now what plans he smiled uncomfortably just plans sir he answered in a low voice now the narrative inquired what plans do you have now they simply said simply we have plans like that they said well, I said, we are leaving on Monday. Is there anything I can do for you before we go? Nicola sh shook his head. But suddenly, Jacob said, sir, he burst out. Every Sunday, we make a visit to the country to Polta, 30 kilometers from here. Usually, we hire bicycles. But tomorrow, since you are so kind, you might send us in your car. Now the narrator asked, okay, we are uh, leaving the city on Monday. Uh, what do you want to do like that? The narrator asked. At the time, Nicola simply, he didn't say anything. Uh, and uh, Jacob was uh, asking, sir, every Sunday we have a program. That is, uh, we have to go to Polta. Usually we use our bicycles, but since you are so kind-hearted man, that's why I'm asking you, uh, please uh, help us uh, uh, in our car, sir. I had already told Luigi he might have the Sunday off. However, I answered, I will drive you out of myself. The narrator replied, okay, Luigi, the driver uh, won't work on Sundays. Anyway, I will drive for you. Like that, uh, the narrator Said. There was a pause. Nicola was glaring at his young brother in vexation. We could not think of troubling you, sir. But Nicola immediately he just uh, watched his brother. Why you are disturbing uh, others in the way? In a way, he is asking. It won't be any trouble. But the narrator said it is not a trouble or uh, to me. He bit his lip. Then, in a rather put tone, he said, "Very well." <laughs>